Hey guys, welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and WeBuyGuns.com in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to another video here where I have something incredibly cool. This is a collection of Colt Pythons ranging all the way from the 1960s up until the new 2020 model. All of these came into our shop from a single collector here locally, except for this one, this one we had before, but I wanted to throw it in this video. So I wanted to do a quick video and just show off what we have here. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around, it's coming up now. All right guys, so the Colt Python is a revolver that needs no introduction. If you've been involved with firearms for even a little while, I am sure you recognize the name and have probably seen or maybe even handled a Colt Python before. Now Colt did re-release the brand in 2020, which has revitalized interest, especially with newer shooters and the Colt Python uh, name and brand and lineup. Now, Colt did actually release the Python in 1955. That was the same year that Smith & Wesson would release their very popular and very famous Model 29. Now, the 29 from Smith & Wesson was a 44 Magnum. The Colt Python was always known for being a 357. Now, they did have a 38 special version known as the Target model, which they only made a few thousand of. I've actually had one of those in here before. It was an eight inch nickel, beautiful gun. Um, but by and large, they're pretty much all a 357 Magnum. Now, even though they would, be, uh, they would come out with them in 1955, they would stay in production all the way up until about 1997 when Colt would actually transition manufacturing as a standard line production gun over to their custom shop. They had done this by about 1999. They would then continue uh, as a custom shop firearm with production from 1999 to about 2005, discontinuing the line altogether with actually their 50th anniversary, 50 years of production. That would be the end of the Colt Python lineup. Now in 2020, they would re-release the line here in a four and a quarter inch, and then shortly thereafter, they would release the six inch barrel. And then just recently in 2022, they released a three inch barrel as well. Again, all in 357 and all stainless. Now Colt has offered the Python in many different barrel lengths and many different finishes over the year. First, when they were released in 1955, they were uh, issued in what was known then as the Python Blue, later known as the Royal Blue Finish. Uh, which is what this is, a very, very lustrous, very high sheen blue, beauty, probably the most beautiful bluing on any commercial firearm I've ever seen or any firearm I've ever seen. They would also have the bright nickel. Then they would shortly thereafter in about 1956, I believe, come out with the electroless nickel. And then in the 1980s, they would release the stainless versions, a brush stainless and then the mirror stainless in about 1985 and 1986 or so. So barrel lengths, the most common you're gonna see are four like this and six like these. They also have the two and a half inch like this one and this one. And then the lesser common eight inch and the three inch that is probably the most collectible. Uh, so let's go ahead and go through these. So in 1955, Colt wanted to release a new firearm that was going to show off the, just the sheer craftsmanship and the firearm production capabilities of the Colt manufacturing company. Now, the Python was always intended to be a mainline production firearm. It was actually uh, Al Gunther from Colt that was tasked with, with the ability of how can we take a very finely made, very hand-fitted and hand-finished firearm and make it a production firearm. So first in 1955, Dan Bedford and Al Dijon, which were probably the most senior and most experienced gunsmiths at Colt, were the actual, uh, the only two actually that could do final polishing and final assembly of the firearms. And for two years, the first two years, every single Colt Python that left Colt factory went through the hands of either one of those two or both of those gentlemen. Nobody else was allowed to do final assembly or final finishing on those firearms. That's why when it comes to collecting in 1955 and in 1956, early serial numbers are going to demand the highest premium, especially if they're in excellent condition with their original packaging. Now, by about 1958, there was a tremendous exploding demand for these Colt Pythons. Now, at the time, they were about 160 so dollars. If you account for inflation today, that's about between 15 and $1,700 in today's dollars. So not really unaffordable, especially for the quality and craftsmanship that we were getting from the from Colt with the Colt Python. Now again, by 1958, they're expanding manufacturing and they would start allowing more master gunsmiths from Colt to take over final fit, finish and assembly. But still these were gunsmiths that were the most experienced at Colt. So everything through the late 1950s all the way up even through about i would say about the mid 1980s is still all being completely finished and, and completed 
by really, really talented, really, really qualified gunsmiths. In fact, even if you wanted to do, you know, the, the beautiful sheen on the bluing of these pythons, and I'll get some close-up roll for you guys, um, they would actually very uh, finely and very delicately polish all the external parts of these. If you wanted to do final polishing on a python, you actually had to have a minimum of about eight or nine years experience from Colt just doing polishing on revolvers. In fact, Colt did have a trades camp or certification that uh, they would actually pay to send their uh, the, their gunsmiths to to get training on this uh, on this skill. So these were very much tradesmen and craftsmen uh, who were taking over each little tiny component of manufacturing. Now, as we're getting through the 1980s, specifically into the 1990s, the cost of labor is getting way too expensive. A lot of international labor is starting to be exploited. A lot of jobs are moving overseas, and we have the emergence of new modern era equipment that can do very fine precision CNC machining within a very uh, small margin of error. Prior to that, you would machine larger parts and then hand stone and hand file and hand polish those parts down to fit. Now modern CNC machinery coming about in the 1990s can actually get final production of those parts down to a very, very fine detail. So the cost of labor is actually starting to go up. So coal is starting to not really be uh, not really able to afford to pay these master gunsmiths to final fit and finish an assembly when they could just pay machines to or buy machines to do it, I should say. So by about the 1990s, this is starting to become apparent. Everything's starting to move over to sort of, um, uh, you know, what I want to say, machine. Everything's being finished off on machines and whatnot. And the demand for the firearm would start to wane a little bit. Again, by the 1990s, they just moved everything over to the custom shop, and by 2005, it was done. When we have now in 2020, the 2020 model, and I have a very detailed video comparing the new 2020, mo uh, 2020 model to one of the older, you know, 1980s model Colts, and you can go watch that. I'll leave it linked below. This is, of course, all modern production. So you're not getting any final fit and finish and anything like that from, you know, hand, the handwork of master artisans of, you know, manufacturing. This is just all done on machines and then final assembly. So, um, Definitely a nice firearm, but not anywhere the amount of sort of attention or detail put into this as there was from something like the 60s or the 70s. And to show you off what we have here, particularly, uh, these two are the oldest. So uh, these are late 1960s. I believe this one's a 1967. This is a two and a half inch. Now, overall condition on this one. These are original Colt grips, but they are a very narrower profile. They're not the thicker profile you typically see, and th these are different too. So I don't know if these were pulled off of a different firearm. They may have been. I'll have to do a little bit of research on this, but this is Colt's Royal Blue Finish. Uh, there is a little bit of muzzle wear up here at the front and a little bit here on the cylinder, so I would say probably the low end of very good, maybe the high end of good as far as Python, I'd probably say it's still in the very good condition. So other than a little bit of wear here and here, it's actually excellent. Um, so I would say very good condition. Beautiful firearm from the late 1960s in the Royal Blue. If I move over to this one, this is also from the late 1960s, I think 1969 or 1968. I did date all these specifically. I just don't have them written down in front of me. Again, this is Colts Royal Blue. These are typically the grip profiles you find on the Python. This is a four inch barrel, which the four and the six inch are the most common that I see. This one is in excellent condition. There's not a mark on it anywhere. Uh, maybe a couple little handling marks on the grips, but you have this beautiful uh, polished royal blue finish even down on the trigger on the back of the hammer spur you have a sort of a matte blue on top two pins on the site the earlier ones were a single pin so there's that uh, if I get into the 1970s this is a late 1970s so again there's there's not a lot of changes that happen over the years probably the biggest change differences were probably from the 50s to the 60s and then again, probably from the 80s to the 90s, and then from the 90s to the late, like the 2020s. So from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, pythons, there's not a lot of differences between them. Uh, again, royal blue, beautiful finish. I believe that these are Colt grips, like target grips, probably from a different model. I haven't seen any other python with these uh, finger groups on them. Six inch barrel, beautiful condition. I mean, again, not a mark on it anywhere with the original box. And I'll talk about the boxes in a minute. Then we get into the 80s. Again, 
royal blue, six inch. Beautiful lighter colored grips, excellent condition. I mean, not a single mark on it anywhere, not even a very faint turn line. Um, excellent, beautiful firearm. There's that one, no box on this one. Staying in the 80s, now we have the stainless. The 80s is when the stainless is introduced. Um, this one, again, six inch barrel, original box, standard contour uh, python grips that we're used to. Two pin sight, of course they were doing by this time. Again, excellent condition, not really a mark on it anywhere, and has its original box. We have from about the same era in the 1980s a two and a half inch. Two and a half inch is a little bit more rare. Um, and I believe that this is a, this is definitely a stainless. I'm pretty sure this one's a stainless. It's maybe a, could be a nickel, but I actually am not too great at telling the difference. But this may be a small handling marker too, but also excellent condition in the original box. Then we move into the 1990s, and by this time we're starting to see a lot of machinery used, um, some uh, machining, um, still a well-made firearm. We have some uh, cost-saving measures like the rubberized hard grips. This is a four inch, probably one of the, again, most common barrel lengths. This one definitely has been used on holster. There's some holster wear and some handling marks on it. I would probably call this one the high end of good condition or the low end of very good. So this is probably has the most wear on it compared to all these uh, with its original box. And then this is the 2020 version in the four and a quarter inch barrel, um, stainless finish. And this is, I would call it like new. Um, some of the changes they made is they reinforced the frame, adding about 30% more material up here at the top. Um, you have a colored orange front post, which actually is the case on the 90s version as well as well as this one. Um, adjustable rear target sight, which is the same. Uh, the grip contours are a little bit different. This is more of a shallow curve in this sort of stepped contour, whereas this is a more defined uh, curve here. You're going to notice ribbing on the back strap of the older ones, whereas this is just smooth. So, you know, with modern production, to keep a new price on these of $1,500 or $1,600, they had to do some cost saving stuff. This is a serrated hammer. The original ones are checkered. If you want way more detail on this, again, I have a video to so check below. It's a nice. And then finally, we can kind of talk about the boxes and we have three of the four that were used. So from early production until about the early 80s, uh, you would have the Colt sort of wood grain style inside of a clamshell styrofoam. It's kind of a, a sleeve that fits around a clamshell styrofoam. Now in the late 80s, they would stay with that, but the sleeve would change to a more maroon, like a solid maroon red color with Colt's pony logo on it. I'll show you guys a rolling picture of that. Then in the 90s, it went to this style of Colt blue case. And then for the 2020 model, it went to the modern Colt blue case with the snake logo on it. I guess this one does. Yeah, this one does too, but this is the larger box with the larger Colt logo. So that is just a brief rundown. Guys, in terms of prices, they, I mean, pythons are all over the place in terms of value, but you know, one thing is certain is they're not cheap. <laughs> so uh, the cheapest you're gonna find them is like a used 2020 model, um, maybe around the 12 to 15 range, wherever you find it. Um, and, but the, you know, the original ones, I mean, they, they in, in excellent condition tend to start around two uh, and they, they can go way up from there for rare models. So anyway, really, really cool firearms. I'm happy to get them in and briefly share them with you guys. If you have any questions, please leave those down below. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button. Please consider subscribing and we will see you guys on the next one.